Hello, my name is Leo Saramago. I'm a music artist, songwriter, slash audio mix engineer, and I've been addicted to 3D animation, compositing, and color correction for the past six years. Here's some of my most recent work, and I'm not gonna lie to you, it's been a very steep learning curve. Frustration comes with the territory, and I get it. I'm an artist just like you. The faster I can get my visions to come true, the better. So my goal here is to share some of the workflow stuff that I've come up with along the way. This video is about Cinema 4D's motion system and how to use it to copy large amounts of keyframe data with just a few clicks. Position, scale, rotation, PLA, also known as point level animation, parameters, user data included, all these can benefit from the process I'm about to show you. Quick warning, if you're dealing with character rigs, I have to remind you that this workflow is not the same as retargeting animation. Joint orientations must match and character size difference can be a problem. Data is copied as is. You should keep that in mind. Make sure you subscribe and hit that like button. I'll take it as feedback to make more videos like this one. There's nothing left to say, let's go for it. The key to make this work is to keep hierarchies consistent. So uh, let's pretend I'm going to create an entire rig right now. I'll start with a null. This null will be my root and I would nest everything in here. Um, first, I would have my controllers. I would nest my controllers inside this null. Those controllers would drive my joints and all my joints would be nested in here. Uh, last but not least, my geometry that would be nested underneath this last null. I'll select everything, drag it all, and now they're all children of my root. Next step on this fake rig, I'll bring in a character that I've downloaded from Mixamo. Um, it's an Atipose, and I'll make sure geometry is selected. Click OK. I will not assign any takes. There it is. Next, I have to make sure everything goes where everything's supposed to go. I'll drag the Mixamo joints underneath the joints null that I had created and the Geo from Mixamo underneath my Geo null. And here it is, my quick and dirty fake rig. Yours doesn't have to be exactly like mine. In fact, it doesn't have to be anything like mine. I just built it from scratch so that anyone can follow what I'm doing. And um, it seems like I cannot stress this enough. The key to make this work is to keep your hierarchies consistent. We are going to make a motion clip out of these keyframes you see here in the Mixamo rig join chain. I will select the root. This is Cinema 4DS22, so I'll find what I need in menu, animate, add motion clip. I'll give it a name now, but you don't have to do it at this stage. You can call it whatever you want later. I will check remove keyframes and uncheck parameters because I know there are no parameters in the Mixamo rig. I'll hit OK and I will explain what's just happened. Cinema 4D went down my hierarchy looking for position and rotation keyframes and copied everything it could find into a motion source. This motion source is now part of my project file. And we get access to motion sources by dealing with motion clips inside the motion system tags. If you haven't noticed yet, Cinema 4D has just automatically added a motion system tag to my root null. And it also removed all keyframes from my Mixamo joint chain, because I did check that box that said remove keyframes when I added the motion clip. It's time we had a look at that motion system tag. I will turn off show motion clip ghosts. I don't need it now. Guess what? I'm a ghostbuster. I'll click open in TL. TL stands for timeline. On the right, we see a motion clip. It references a motion source on the left. I'll get rid of it for now. I'll close this timeline window. Bear with me. This workflow is about to become very effective. I will fold everything. Control drag to make a copy. I'll delete the tag. Unfold this new hierarchy. And just to illustrate another point, I will delete this geo null with everything inside it. I'll also delete this Mixamo joint chain. And from now on, this hierarchy will be my dummy. Okay, my setup is done. 
And I am about to bring in another animation from Mixamo. It's this one right here. And uh, I don't need geometry, just the joints. Click OK. And here it is. Let's have a look. Everything looking good. All right. You've seen me do this before. I will drag this new Mixamo joint chain to where it's supposed to be, which is inside this joint snow. Compare both hierarchies. They are basically the same down to the point where we find keyframe animation. Well, I bet you can see where this is going. From now on, I'll generate motion sources and motion clips from my dummy. So I go to animate, add motion clip. I will name it now. Cinema 4D detects start and end based on the animation that I've just merged. I will not remove keyframes this time and I will uncheck parameters. All right, let's have a look. I am afraid of no ghosts. Shout out to Ray Parker Jr. And we're back in the timeline, this time for the dummy. Now, uh, have a look at these keyframes. They're still there because I told it not to remove them. So far, so good. Let's forget about the dummy and let's make our character dance. Open its timeline. And now we simply drag the motion source that we generated with our dummy to the character's motion layer. All right, let's make it visible. I'll power up my vocals. <clears throat> Here we go! And always remember, kids, keep your hierarchies consistent! Drugs, you know. Stay away. What if I need to go back to that T-pose? No mystery there. Just click on the tag. Open in timeline. Delete this dance motion clip. And drag in the motion source for the T-pose. Put it right there on the motion layer. And you can either bring the playhead to it or bring it to where the playhead is and boom, there it is. No pain. If we ever need to convert our motion clips back to keyframes, we can certainly do it. As you can see here, there are no keyframes in this join chain. I'll click open in timeline and uh, I'll get rid of this motion clip here for the T-pose and drag my dense motion source. Now I'll place my playhead after my motion clip and the reason why I do this is because sometimes it messes up my keyframes when I convert the motion clip back to keyframes. I don't know why this happens. I don't know if it's a bug or if it's just my system. I never leave my playhead over the motion clip I'm about to convert. Next, I will select my motion clip. Then in the timeline menu, I'll go to motion system, then second to last, convert layer to keyframe animation. That's the one I want. That's it. My motion clip has just been converted. Um, I still have the motion source there and I can make a new motion clip out of it if I drag that motion source to the timeline. But as you can see, that motion clip I had selected, it's now just keyframes. All right. The moves are looking good. I don't see anything wrong with the joints orientation. Okay, it looks good. A nice workflow tip now. I'll save my motion sources. I'll open my timeline, right click on my motion source name, hit save motion source as, and here I'll give it a name, put it in a folder, you know the drill. Now I can load this motion source from any Cinema 4D project file. Uh, it's really easy to do and it's worth it. Let's have a look at how we load motion sources. I'll hit the tag, open in timeline. In this example, I will select 
and delete both motion sources. Right click in this blank area and hit load motion source. I pick what I want. I can drag this motion source to the timeline. Now I have a motion clip and it's all working again. Let's put this dummy workflow to test. I will fold my character hierarchy and I will unfold my dummies and I will delete my Mixamo joint chain without thinking twice. I'll write open in timeline and I'll get rid of this motion clip. Close this window. I will bring in another Mixamo animation, this one here, boxing. I really don't need geometry. Okay. I'll say no to reassign takes. Now I will hide my character. Let's have a look at the boxing animation. All right, looks good. Let's put that Mixamo joint chain where it's supposed to be. Underneath my joint snull. Now you've seen this before. I will select my root, which is the dummy null. I'll go to Menu, Animate, Add Motion Clip. As you can see, this is very easy and I'm doing this while I'm talking, which is slowing the process down. Once you get used to it, it's pretty fast. I will hide my dummy and bring my character back. Now open in Timeline. Let's get rid of this motion clip, this dance motion clip. I'll drag the box in motion source. Now I have a motion clip. The character is boxing. Great. It's time to troubleshoot a rookie mistake. Let's open in timeline drag the motion source now we have a motion clip that is a reference to that motion source the character is moving as before now let's break this hierarchy i'll create a null unfold my character drag it here now we have a child sibling sibling joint chain let's see over here child sibling oh my god it's broken they don't match anymore my character won't move. Let's change things a bit. Still nothing. Okay, let's try something different. This time I will create a more complex hierarchy, but I'll do it underneath the controller's null. Everything here is underneath controller's null. Let's see. All right, it's working. This means that the data from the motion source in that motion clip finds its way down the hierarchy to that joint chain. Child, sibling, joint chain. Let's see here. Child, sibling, joint chain. So, not even what comes after that joint chain is a problem, and all those nulls inside the controller's null don't make a difference. This was brought to you by... Keep your hierarchies consistent. Smile. Let's go back to the T-Pose. You see, I've just dragged the playhead wherever the motion clip was, and it worked. Here's a quick side note. Names are irrelevant in this workflow. Uh, I'm going to unfold and rename and be silly. Okay. Now, let's have a look. Open a timeline and I'll bring my motion source. Now we have a motion clip and the character is dancing. The name really doesn't matter. I'll change it after I have set that motion clip and it really doesn't care. I'll do it here in a deeper level and it still works. And last note, what if I deleted my tags by accident? Well, I have to do things manually. Let's delete them. Now I have to right-click my root object, then animation tags, motion system. Now I have my new motion system tag 
click on it, open in timeline, we see the timeline, look at our motion sources. They're still there, but we cannot drag them to the timeline yet because we don't have motion layers. So we have to right click on the object, add motion layer. Now we have to twirl it open and simply start dragging motion sources to the timeline again. Check it out, it's moving and it's not alone. The ghosts are back, Ray Parker Jr. And busting makes me feel good.